Moving on to question number four, other parts of uh, this paper will be attached in the description, hopefully. Um, let's start. Number four, Sarah is a trader who has prepared her income statement for the year ended 31st December 2023. This shows the profit for the year of 2180. She has closed the ledger accounts for income and expenses and has transferred the closing inventory to the income statement fine. The following balances remain in Sarah's ledger at 31st December 2023. Okay, assets. And by the way, this is closing inventory. Normally, normally uh, you get opening inventory there and closing inventory in the notes section but they have made it clear that they have put the closing inventory over there okay uh, the rest of the information fine prepare the inventory account for 31st December 2023 balance it down later on okay so <clears throat> inventory account is a bit tricky because we have two transfers from the inventory account from the other assets and liabilities sorry not liabilities and assets my apologies from the other expenses and income accounts, the transfer to the income statement is only one for the year. But for inventory, it's two transfers. One is for the opening balance and the other is for the closing balance. Let's see how that happens. So for the opening balance, we're gonna transfer, that's the opening inventory, right? We're gonna transfer that to the income statement. So on 2023, December, end of the year, we're gonna transfer the opening inventory to the income statement 5811 but it doesn't end here because we don't just have opening inventory we also have closing inventory now before we transfer the closing inventory to the income statement let's just uh, put the closing inventory there so closing inventory will basically be this cd it's uh, 6275 6275 bd Six two seven five. Now there's only one thing left. There's one missing space, which is this. Six two seven five. And that's the transfer to income statement for the closing inventory. If you notice, both the transfers happen on December 31st, but this one is for opening inventory. This one is for closing inventory. We have uh, discussed this in our classes in much detail on why that happens. Uh, like Why is opening transferred like that, closing transferred like that? But that would be too detailed for, for this session. Uh, Jan 1st, 2024. Okay, let's move on. Prepare the cap capital account for the year ending 31st December, balance the account and bring down the balance on 1st January. Okay, now one thing is uh, they did say income statement is already prepared and it says that's our profit and that's why we're able to make the capital account. So it starts with the opening balance which was provided to us, 115793, 115793. How do I know where to put it? Well, capital account is always credited balance brought down when was it brought down 2023 jan 1st okay uh there was profit for the year which is which we can put there profit for the year you can say for the year which is 2180 okay anything else about capital None of that. There's drawings. If it doesn't say anything, just, uh, oh, never mind. All types of drawings will appear in the capital account. So don't worry about that being drawing of goods or cash or whatever. As long as it's drawing, we will debit the capital account with that. So drawings, of course, on December. 31st 2023 and they specifically asked us to balance it so clearly that side is a smaller it's called balance carried down and now what we will do is add up the credit side <coughs> it's uh, 115793 
plus 20180 gives me 135973. 135973. And if I deduct the 19260, I get 116713. That's not enough because they want us to balance it down. So 2024, Jan 1 balance brought down oh sorry that goes here Jan 1 balance brought down <coughs> 116 713 let's uh, erase that oops okay was about to mess it up but we are safe all right let's move on Prepare the statement of fin financial position on 31st December. Okay, now so that's going to be a little bit time consuming, but it's okay because they've made things so clear for us. Uh, we just have to copy paste essentially. So make sure you nicely organize it. So you start with non-current assets for which you have uh, premises. Then you have fixtures and fittings. You write that completely in the exam, okay? Uh, both are at cost, so 140, 140. Sorry, need to push it down. What about depreciation? 15,000 depreciation on this. Taken, taken, taken. No depreciation provided, provided for premises, which is not shocking because premises most times are not even depreciated, right? I misspelled that, premises, okay? Uh, so in this case, no, nothing there. And so it's just going to be 40 minus 15, 25,000. That's just uh, as it is. Okay, you can label that cost, accumulated depreciation, um, carrying amount, or net book value, or carrying value. It's all the same. Let's add this up. That's 140,000. That's 15,000. That's uh, 125,000. That's for your non current assets. Close this off, but this one is going to be used later on. So let's now list down our current assets. Can you say CA? You cannot. You need to write current assets as it is. So we have uh, for the current assets, we have inventory, receivables, for which don't forget there's provision. So inventory. There is trade receivables. There is uh, provision cash. So trade receivable minus provision for doubtful debts. Just write that fully, please, properly. <coughs> and then there is uh, cash. Anything else? No. Let's copy the data. For the inventory, we have the closing inventory 6275. 6275. For uh, this one, we can show the working. 8540427. Let me do that. 8540. Minus 427 <coughs> gives me 8113. And then we have to add cash to this working 350. And that's it for the current assets. So 8113 plus 
six two seven five plus three fifty gives me fourteen seven thirty eight. And now I can get my total assets plus one twenty five. One three nine seven three eight. One three nine seven three eight is my total assets. Now, as you might be aware, as you should be aware, the next section is about your capital and liabilities. Say capital and liabilities in which you will have uh, first the capital section which we have already dealt with we have the capital amount 116713 we have that figured and then we have uh, do we have any non-current liabilities that's current liability don't forget that's current liability don't forget that's non-current liability so non-current liability we can just say long-term loan long-term loan which is 12,000 and then we can list the current liabilities you may give some space like I like we did here you may leave a space so if you really want to do it nicely let me organize this slightly better so long term liabilities 12,000 and then we have current liabilities just let, let, let me write CL we have uh, trade payables bank overdraft Trade Pebbles, Bank Overdraft. Mm. Wages accrued, yeah, that should also be it. So, Trade Pebbles, Bank Overdraft. Trade Pebbles, Bank Overdraft. And then we have. Uh, wages accrued so you can write wages accrued or any accruals will basically be other payables so trade payables in this case is 5125 bank or draft is 4900 and the last one 1000 5125 plus 1000 plus 4900 gives me 11025 at our final step 11025 plus 12000 plus 116713 139 Seven three eight. Okay, there we go. That's our total capital and liabilities, and it matches. So we are good here. Let's look at this uh, theoretical question. Sarah is considering purchasing a delivery vehicle. Okay, good idea. She thinks her sales would increase if she was able to deliver goods to her customer. She would charge a small amount to her customer to cover the cost of delivery. Well, I think this is good. Um, customers are going to be happy. They will place more orders because a lot of times what happens is customers are far away. They find it difficult to really get things picked up. So when there is this option for delivery, they'll be happier to... Uh, do more business with Sarah 
Sarah advised Sarah whether or not she should purchase the delivery vehicle. So advantages and disadvantages, so easy to come up with these. These are mostly logical. You should never miss out on these marks. So one is that she will be able to sell more to the customers, right? It will, uh, of course, lead to a higher uh, profit. And also she'll be able to charge the customers for the delivery fee. So that's also going to recover the cost of that uh, delivery vehicle. Right. Um, so I think I've given two, three points already. So that's more than enough. You may think of more if you want to, but that's not necessary. Just give, come up with two, three points, explain them well, if you can just go through them in, in a couple sentences and that's enough for two marks of advantages. Now we need two marks of disadvantages. And this could be that she will need to hire drivers, perhaps that's one example. She will need to hire drivers. And uh, then there's this um, additional cost of dealing with that. And then um, we can say the customers may be may not be willing to pay the delivery prices. So the customers may not be willing to pay the delivery prices. The customers may have access uh, to those goods in their own locations. So it may not be necessary for, for us to really uh, bother, you know, delivering it to them. So yeah, one thing is customers may not appreciate that. Customers may not necessarily appreciate that and they won't necessarily pay for the delivery, right? And uh, again, as I said, this leads to us hiring more people, maybe drivers and so on. There, there can be some unanticipated costs like maintenance, for example, can come out. So those are a few examples. And uh, maybe you can say since it's a small amount, it may not cover enough, right? It, the cost of delivery may not recover the amount. That's another one. So I think I've given you like what? Two, three, four of disadvantages. You can just put them, the ones you like the best. Come up with your own. Usually these questions are not in the book. They are your own knowledge, your own uh, logical answer. So just put two points for advantages, two disadvantages and justify and, and conclude, recommend something. State the meaning of the term revenue receipt. Revenue receipt are the amounts received from, from day to day business activity, right? It's from day to day business activity. Amounts received from conducting day to day business activities. That's it for this one. Let's see you in the next one.